help but draw on uh, on on Norrie's what he's what he showed me by what he did. I mean, he didn't actually say, "Oh, this is the way you've got to do it." He was totally unflappable, which I try to be producing records, but it gets very difficult sometimes. And he was very quiet and shy, man, wasn't he? Yes, he was. I, well, yes, yes, he was actually. I don't think he liked to be. Uh, he, did, he wasn't a sort of prominent front of the orchestra, you know, telling jokes at the front type of person. He never was. He's, as I say, he was unflappable, quiet. And he, uh, he was a gadget man as well, did you know that? He used to love gadgets. We used to, we, when he used to be my conductor for me on stage, quite often when you have a blackout, uh, the orchestra couldn't see him for, for the next counting, and he didn't want to shout, three, four. So he bought a baton, it was wonderful, but that long. It looked like a sort of, uh, you know those things that glow in the dark? <laughs> Only it didn't glow until he pressed a button, which was a battery, and it went green. And on the opening night, he just went, he never actually got to use it. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, but he was that kind of guy. He didn't flap. Just picked up another one and went, you know, shouted three, four. Mm. It was one of those things. I just... Uh, he's just one of, a gentleman, you know? I, I just don't think we're going to find anyone to replace him. He also acted on the music side of your, your early films. Do you think this contributed to... Yeah. You know, he had a thing about strings. <clears throat> he, he was a fantastic producer of string sounds and it's not just the production it's writing them it's knowing how to what they call voice the strings so that they sound to the best of uh, you know to the best advantage and films and a lot of string stuff on my singles in fact when the shadows made an album last year actually it may have been the new album but anyway they wanted string sounds on it and they didn't go to anybody that's new they they wanted a, a particular sound and they got nowhere to come and do them for him. And, and he, had a, he had a lot to offer. There's one thing he definitely taught me, and that was how good it is to sing in tune. <laughs> he had a fantastic ear. I remember being so impressed when we had an orchestra there. He'd come down from the box and say, uh, there's somebody in the strings playing a D-flat when it ought to be something else. And no one else had heard it. And the, they'd go through the charts, and sure enough, one of the charts would be written out wrong. And um, it's that kind of professionalism that I never thought I was going to be saying this to you now. It, I mean, I'm remembering it now. So that means that it's obviously stuck in my mind, and that means it has to be of an influence mm. uh, for me. I know that's going to be with me. I'm going to know how important it is that records do sound as though they're in tune. Although I have to admit that uh, some of my colleagues maybe don't think that way. <laughs> I know that he moved away from working with you because of his work here with the, the radio orchestra. Were you pleased by that kind of success? I was, actually. Uh, i tell you what, uh, you know, to pay a tribute to someone, Norrie, let me just tell you this that he, he obviously had to make this decision himself to come up here and we'd worked together incredibly successfully for 15 years or so and for a man like Nari to have produced all those records not just mine but the shadows and he even helped produce well he was the first producer that Olivia Newton-John ever had because she sang a duet with me and Nari produced it but he said to me I don't think I can do much for you in your career and and I think I've now, for someone to give up something successful like that. Well, Cliff, I think you'll agree that he'd be glad that we've had a smile here. Oh, yeah. That we weren't morbid, so let's finish with uh, the piece which earned you both a gold disc, The Young One. <laughs> 